Hey, I am Nolin Ebel Ame with the news. We begin by telling you that the National Police Council has formally confirmed the appointment of Usman Al-Khali Baba as a substantive inspector general of police. The Minister of uh, Police Affairs uh, Command uh, Mohammed Megari Dingyadi announced this while briefing journalists uh, meeting presided over by uh, during a virtual meeting of the National Police Council, which lasted more than two hours, members not only scrutinized the rich credentials of the appointee, but also demanded explanations on how he intends to tackle the internal security challenges bedeviling the country. The council, because of the track records of service of the appointee, the Inspector General of Police, uh, Son Babal Ali, was... Uh, unanimously confirmed as the Inspector General of Police for the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Mr. President used that opportunity to congratulate him for this appointment and to call on him to ensure that uh, the security challenges that this country is uh, facing are brought to the barest minimum. The minister also confirmed that a new IGP will be given the necessary support and assistance by the federal government towards discharging his mandate. If, if you want to have a safe society, you, it has to be expensive. And this administration is quite aware of this and is determined to ensure that uh, whatever is needed to secure this country is also provided. At the last Security Council meeting that we had, Mr. President has aggregated all these things and set up a committee under the chairmanship of the vice president to look into all the issues of not only the police but other security agencies as well and to come up with some recommendations that are tenable, that are practicable so that uh, government will intervene. We are making progress towards that direction. IGP Usman Al-Khali Baba, who briefed the council on the security situation in the country, assured the president and indeed Nigerians that the confidence reposed in him will be justified. We, in collaboration with other security agents and the military, will try to checkmate all acts of lawlessness, criminality, and unlawful agitations in order to ensure life and properties are saved, and at the same time, Nigerian citizens go about their lawful businesses. He said already the worrisome situation in the southeast as regards the attacks on critical national assets and killings of security personnel is being checked. And with the establishment of the Police Trust Fund and Community Policing, the signing into law of the Police Act 2020, as well as several other intervention funds, the desired technology and intelligence-led policing, the IGP said, will be a reality in the best interest of Nigeria. I've also been able to brief council on rescue of kidnapped victims and what we are doing to secure the school children that are being kidnapped and how to go about securing those that are still going to the school. He said since coming on board, a number of arrests have been made as regards criminal elements while several firearms and serious weaponry recovered. From the State House, Adam Musambu, NTA News. President of the Senate, Ahmad Lawan, says the Ninth National Assembly is committed to ensuring proper inclusion of women in nation building. This was his position while receiving a group advocating gender and equal opportunities bill on a courtesy visit. Mobilaji Moribirin has the report. The women group is seeking to bring back the gender and equal opportunities bill which could not be passed by the Eighth Assembly. What we now have is devoid of all the contentious issues which uh, were a reason for the stepping down earlier in the Eighth Senate. Uh, we also want to seek your support to co-sponsor the bill. Uh, we believe that the bill is one 
that will address the issue of discrimination that continues to undermine the, the rights and full potential of Nigerian women. Well, the, rep the report we are getting from the public hearings from the zones is heartwarming. We are getting good news that people are in support. The president of the Senate assured his support for the bill, which has been on the floor of the Senate for years. I want to assure you that we are going to work with you. Uh, this is a different assembly. You have also done some work on the bill. So let me say it's a different bill, even though the contents are not yet known to, to us. But I believe that it's something that you are so proud of, that you are so confident that this time around it will pass. The Gender and Equal Opportunities Bill is aimed at providing enabling environments for women to excel in the society. From the National Assembly, Mubolaji, Mori Biri, NTA News. The Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, has pledged support in the ongoing public hearing on the review of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The National Secretary of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, Daramola Bade, gave the position while briefing the media in Abuja. The areas of core interest of uh, uh, Khan, and it's not just limited to Christians alone, it's in a very wide perspective. It touches the media, it touches the market woman, it touches the man on the street. It touches the church, it touches the mosque, it to touches those that are not even uh, Muslims and, uh, and Christians. It's in all ramifications of this. It touches on social life and religious and political life of all uh, Nigerians and those that are living in Nigeria. We are um, asking that provisions, constitutional provisions should be made for inclusion. Not only to say we, they are giving us 35%, but inclusion of female uh, sector in governance of this country. The Christian Association of Nigeria, Khan, is also backing gender equality, power devolution, among other issues in the Constitution Review. With me in the studio is Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadeja, Deputy Senate Chairman on Public Account and Member Constitution uh, Review Committee. Uh, he's here to tell us more about the ongoing public uh, hearing on the Constitution Review, which commenced on the 3rd of June. Thank you, sir, for joining us on Nationwide. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Uh, of course, uh, the review has continued across the country with areas of interest dominating the discussion. Now, how likely are the sessions to come up with suitable recommendations for an acceptable constitution which represents the people uh, in reference to we the people? No, I think, uh, you know, you see a lot of work has uh, actually uh, gone on before the public hearing started. Uh, the uh, Senate Committee on the Constitutional Review was broken up into uh, subcommittees, which has been working for almost uh, three months. Mm -hmm. You get a lot of bills uh, that uh, uh, require an amendment to the Constitution before they uh, go through. You know, you get a lot of uh, memoranda even before it started. So what we did was uh, we broke out into these subcommittees and tried to identify, uh, you know, proposed legislation that required consular. I mean, we kept it apart. And then we uh, also got a lot of uh, input from the constituency, uh, from NGOs, uh, from women groups. Uh, and that was what gave rise to the 17 uh, uh, subject matters that were sent out across the country to the zonal uh, uh, public hearings. And then, of course, we came back to Abuja and had the uh, two-day national public hearing, which ended today. Uh, so it's left for uh, the Senate to now go back and uh, take the compendium of... Uh, uh, views and memoranda, and then uh, come up together with uh, a document that will go through the next stage of the process, which is uh, to be passed by two-thirds of the state assemblies and uh, two-thirds of uh, 
uh, the uh, National Assembly in respect to uh, uh, Section uh, 9 of the Constitution, which provides for a review. And then uh, it goes to the President for assent. What I can say is uh, I think uh, this time around, uh, Nigerians will be surprised that a lot of the agitations will actually uh, uh, sail through. I say this because I participated in both the zonal uh, public hearings and the national public hearing. A lot of the issues that uh, you know you heard from one part of the country that were being opposed by another part of the country, surprisingly, uh, you know, there seems to be some consensus. Uh, state police, which uh, a lot of states vehemently opposed, maybe because of the uh, nature of the security situation in the country, today there's almost near unanimity in saying, yes, we want state police. Devolution of powers to local governments, almost every uh, state, because the states send their own representation officially, and then, uh, of course, uh, individuals. Uh, so I think, uh, and you know, what is required is uh, a super majority or two-thirds. Okay. I believe a lot of, uh, even some of the issues that I think are controversial will, will pass through this time around. We represent the people, so I cannot oppose a situation where uh, my constituency or my state or my zone say this is what we want. So we'll support it and uh, we'll see it through. Okay, as the representative of the people, just like you said, um, what do you think are the gray areas discovered so far in the process? Uh, the gray areas discovered for me are, you know, people coming to want to uh, prefer alternative uh, routes to constitutional amendment. The constitution itself uh, provided for the way it's supposed to be amended. And it's not impossible because it's been amended before. We've had several amendments since 1999. Mm -hmm. And this is the constitution that's been in place uh, over so uh, six administrations uh, so far. Uh, but then you find some people coming to say, no, uh, today I, there was an interesting submission that uh, even the process we are going through is not legitimate because uh, somebody believes the constitution itself is illegitimate. And when you start from that, you know, uh, somebody who served as a minister, uh, who was uh, appointed a minister following constitutional cons considerations, mm -hmm. somebody who is a lawyer who has probably defended uh, a lot of politicians in court, in tribunals, quoting the same constitution, will now come and tell you that, no, it's illegitimate. Okay, if it's illegitimate, what, we can't create, uh, we, can't, we, can't, we can't amend the constitution uh, in a vacuum. You know, it gave rise or it gave uh, laid down procedures for its own amendment. So these are some of the gray areas, uh, I believe, that, uh, uh, you know, some extreme views that we've heard. But apart from that, uh, generally, uh, in the divergent views, uh, pro and cons, uh, some are for, some are against. Uh, and I think at the end of the day, when we finally uh, put our heads together, we'll come up with uh, a large percentage of those uh, recommendations that I think would go through uh, uh, the two-thirds uh, passage that is required to effect a change. All right. Now, should an average Nigeria believe in this amendment process and uh, when it eventually scaled through? I think so. Uh, uh, the, this, the, you know, I, we've never had a public hearing that was this open before. No holes barred. Uh, everything was entertained, uh, from the practical to the ridiculous. Come and, uh, uh, you know, uh, expand your views. And very wide and diverse range of uh, uh, memoranda. Uh, today we had uh, via uh, Zoom uh, memoranda from uh, Nigerians in the diaspora from like uh, 15 different countries. So I haven't seen a situation where this kind of uh, democracy in discourse uh, has taken place in respect to uh, the change. And I want to tell them uh, it was open, you know, there was nothing hidden. We didn't have any secret meetings. Whatever you say, eventually uh, you can uh, uh, cross-check it uh, when we finish our own processes and present it to the general public again mm -hmm. before it goes through the process of going to the uh, uh, state's assembly and then coming back to the national assembly. If at any point in time mm -hmm. you believe uh, we can't leave it open because then, of course, uh, we'll probably be caught up in the sheer uh, mass of recommendations. That was why we gave those 17 uh, uh, guidelines, which in turn were derived from the two or three months of meetings that we had. Okay. And Nigerians generally agreed mm -hmm. to stay within those 17, uh, uh, you know, subtopics. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we got, uh, you know, we'll put together and we'll present it again before Nigerians. I mm -hmm. think uh, even the public hearing process itself should generate some kind of uh, confidence from Nigerians expecting to see a change. All right. We hope for us. I've been speaking with Senator Ibrahim Hassan Hadeja. He's the Deputy Senate Chairman on Public Account, a member Constitutional Review Committee. Moving on.
the Minister of Administration has been rewarding with professional forums engagement with public office holders at the APC National Secretariat in Abuja. Salihu Abdullahi Gwanara reports. Midway into the second term of the APC-led government, the APC Professionals Forum is using this platform to close the gap in information dissemination and make participants give account of their stewardship about government activities. In the era of digital world, with information and communication technology dominating the global space, Nigeria is not left behind as policies by the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy have been significantly implemented and are impacting on the fight against corruption and insecurity as well as boosting the economy. When we offer it without any official documentation to a private institution, and the price of that was valued at over 28 billion naira. And I said we cannot ignore this. Government needs money to help and support citizens. We formalize it and we ask for justification of taking the spectrum for free. No, we mandated them through NCC that the money must be paid. As at today, the company has agreed to pay 28 billion naira. Not only has agreed, they have started the payment. Participants agreed that the Buhari administration is repositioning Nigeria as a giant on the continent through the Nigeria Data Protection Regulation that is boosting security. In Abuja, Salihu Abdullah Higwanara, NTA News. It's now time to join Awal in our Lagos Network Center for Nationwide More from That Zone. Hi, Awal. Good to see you. Or see you too. Good to see you. The persistent gridlock at the Apapo Corridor in Lagos is inducing new ideas and prevailing on terminal operators to follow the guidelines for the review of tariff and adoption of digitalization of all ports operations. Imole Ayo Tokede Ogunfora reports that key agencies are beefing up strategies put in place to improve the ease of doing business at the port. This is a CCTV room where cargo movements, discharged vessels, as well as security of containers are monitored. It is one of the methods adopted to digitize terminal operations. These visits to some of the top terminals is to improve on existing cooperation as well as sensitize more on the need to operate 24 hours as a means of reducing traffic congestion on the roads leading to the port. We have seen terminals that were barely 24% compliant, but now they are reaching 70, 80. And that's why we are really proud to see the changes they have introduced. Um, things are done uh, uh, through automation in this terminal. On the issue of tariff, deal process has been identified as the way out, playing more responsibilities on terminal operators to be just in their business. Concerning uh, tariff, uh, we have decided to hold on on the increase which was supposed to take effect from uh, 1st of June, but this is something which uh, we deem it's necessary. We are in an environment where Keeping the same tariff in naira terms for the last 10 years is not sustainable anymore. As the pace of work at the Apapa Ushudi Oworoshoki Expressway speeds up, there is hope that it will complement the target of the ease of cargo evacuation when completed. In Lagos, in Moliari Tukedi, Ugunfuwara, NTA News. And moving on to human development, where the chairman Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike W. Erewa, says government will leverage on technology to build capacity for future economies, which is information driven. The NITCOM boss gave the assurance at the commissioning of a civic center in Ikorodu to cater for training of youths in information communication technology. Michael Olale reports. This building is a symbolic description of things falling in place at the right time. Despite the resources mobilized to ensure completion more than 15 years ago, the project remained abandoned. But at the time this expected, help came in an angelic form 
and within a week it was ready for commissioning. To God be the glory, alhamdulillah. The chairman, Nigerians and Diaspora Commission, facilitated the completion and since she has been nursing the ambition of establishing a center to train young people in entrepreneurship skills, this initiative is apt. In this same Lagos Polytechnic, I've been able to give them about 500 computers, laptops, iPads. So we want partnering with Lagos Polytechnic for the Nigerian youth to be, feel free to use this place for various types of training. The immediate one will be on how to make phones. The Lagos State Polytechnic in Ikorodu, formerly a school of science and technology, will be leveraging on the expertise of the center to develop capacity in technology while also strengthening research. We are happy that it's going to serve the generality of the Nigerian students, the generality of Lysprotech students, and the entire Nigerian youth for technology development. It is a, a laudable project that uh, will enhance teaching and learning, and of course research. The center is a child of necessity, considering the indispensability of young people to the future. In Lagos, Michael Ale, NT News. You're watching NT Nationwide. Time now for a break. The news will be back shortly. To stay with us. Recently, both the president and vice president demonstrated leadership by being among the first Nigerians to have the AstraZeneca vaccine administered to them on live TV for all in the country to see. Subsequently, Many federal ministers, political leaders, and members of the presidential COVID-19 task force have publicly taken the vaccine to follow in the footsteps of President Buhari and Vice President Oshibaja. To obtain it yourself, please go to the NPHCDA website. There is a link to click on in order to register and schedule your vaccination. In the meantime, please continue to wear face masks, wash your hands frequently, Use hand sanitizer and observe social distancing. This message was brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture. Revision classes on television for students in secondary schools in English and Mathematics will commence on the NTA. The revision classes will transmit Mondays to Fridays from 5 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. on the network service of the NTA. This is organized in preparation for the various national examinations and orders. This is brought to you by the Federal Ministry of Education. Nigerian youths are about the greatest asset the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mahmoud Buhari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth Entrepreneurship Support Years by Bank of Industry, the Youth Investment Fund by the CBN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of patience and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag Youth for Greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. Visit our website on www.nta.ng for more news and updates, or follow us on Twitter at NTA News Now. You can also like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash NTA Network News. Stay connected and subscribe to our YouTube channel at www.youtube.com forward slash NTA News Online. Watch our news live streaming at www.nta.ng forward slash live. Thank you for staying with us on Nationwide and this is Abuja. The parents of the Saluhu Tanko Islamia School 
children abducted by uh, bandits in Tegena uh, keep the hope of being reunited with their wards alive as they pay routine visits to the school for updates regarding the release of their loved ones. Mukhtar Abu Bakar Uwo gathered that the abductors are demanding for ransom. Some of the parents of the abductees keep visiting the school on daily basis, hoping to hear good news regarding the release of their children. The experience was very bad. In fact, I couldn't, I didn't even know what to do because I was hearing the shouting of these children, screaming, calling the names of their parents, you know. In fact, sorry. it was a very bad experience. Sorry, sorry, sorry for what it happened. It was terrible. Sorry, sorry for what happened. Sorry for I what never happened. expected that and I don't pray for even my enemy to experience this people. And I'm pleading yeah, yeah. with the government to help because the amount they are calling, you know, we don't know where to get this amount of money. They said they need about 150 million. The headmaster of the Islamia school, Abu Bakr Garba, who alleged to have spoken with one of the abducted female teachers via mobile phone said the children are in very critical condition. The latest update is that uh, some of the toddlers there with her, uh, some of them are down. They are not feeling. They are not feeling fine. They, they don't have food to eat. They are, they are giving them uh, this uh, this uh, uh, granite cake. From Tegina, in Rafi local government area of Niger State, Mukhtar Abu Bakr, NTA News. The presidency says the latest article on Nigeria in foreign affairs titled The Giant of Africa is Failing is unfair both to a magazine with such an esteemed pedigree and to its readers. The statement adds that Ambassador Campbell has been predicting the collapse of Nigeria for several years, stressing that he is, of course, entitled to his opinions even where events consistently prove him wrong. Uh, it is said the author of the article, the f he said the author of the article got the facts wrong when he wrote that at an April meeting with U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, President Buhari reportedly requested that the headquarters of the U.S. Africa Command be moved from Germany to Nigeria so that it would be closer to the fight against jihadi groups in the country's north. The presidency emphasized that President Buhari did not request that Africa move to Nigeria, noting that the transcript of the call with Secretary Blinken is available on the State Department's on website. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has described as unfortunate the involvement of prominent citizens who engaged in the spreading of fake news on the death of Professor Goswil Obioma. Lai Mohammed stated this during a chat with members of the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture Praise Corps. Anthony Forson reports. Expressing regret in the manner with which the death of the NECO registrar, Professor Godfrey Obioma, was reported in the social media. The tweet of uh, Professor uh, Chidi Adekalu, and without missing words, I think it's the highest level of irresponsibility on the part of a man that, of you know, with such a pedigree, a former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission to engage in such egregious fake news. The minister said the fake tweet by the former NHRC chairman has the capacity to cause a breach of public peace. You can imagine what would have happened, for instance, if there were reprisal attacks based on that, you know, fake news from uh, Professor and not alone in this. Now, I think it's about time we wake up in Nigeria and take, uh, you know, uh, uh, this issue of fake news more seriously than we are taking it. It is in realization of such situation, the minister pointed out informed the need to launch a sensitization campaign on the dangers of fake news and hate speech in 2017. In Abuja, Anthony Forson. NTN News.
Nigeria must have been one of the countries that have done well in managing the COVID-19 pandemic so far. This is the view of the Senate Committee on Special Duties at a meeting with the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, which attributes the success to presidential commitment. National Assembly correspondent Abdullahi Aminu reports. It was an overview on activities of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, headed by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa. Details of relationship with other agencies and ministries, funding and expenditure were received by the committee. Under my watch, I ensured that there was prudence in the management of resources. Before we even started, I requested for ICPC, EFCC, the Office of the Accountant General and civil society organization to be embedded in all the MDAs where these transactions and procurements will take place. We have the advantage of being able to watch what is happening in other countries and learn our lessons quickly and be able to adjust and take our own remedial measures before we see any uh, affliction of that nature. Uh, at the peak of this uh, pandemic, the Federal Radio Corporation and the NTA donated, devoted a lot of their programs and their time to the advocacy. So it, it is correct to say that they were rendering social services because they were not paid for it. But other channels, we had to pay them. The way and manner in which Nigerians are neglecting COVID-19 protocols formed a part of the observations made by the senators. I must also congratulate you for doing a yeoman's job, an excellent job that you have done. The need for a broadcasting code by the National Broadcasting Commission to compel media stations to provide prime time for public sensitization on COVID-19 was also received by the committee. From the National Assembly, Ablai Aminu, NTA News. I'm still on health to improve healthcare standards and services across the country. The Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria has inaugurated another South-South Zonal Office in Calabar. Paul Ebel completes the report. The health sector is crucial to the success of any economy of a country because a healthy workforce will bring along with it a productive nation. From a cut visit to the flag of ceremony of the Zonal Office of the Nursing and Midwifery Council of Nigeria Complex for Aquabom and Cross River States, the complex is expected to assist in creating accessibility, monitoring, and supervision of activities of nurses and midwives. We feel that because of the increasing number of nurses and midwives, increasing number of training institutions, and also the need to ensure effective implementation of uh, universal health coverage, and that's why we decided to establish additional zone that will effectively survive Cross River and the Aquaiva. So really getting a zonal office for the nursing and midwifery council in Nigeria are accessible and then of course strengthen all our schools and colleges of nursing within the state. This zonal structure is one of the seven new offices established to complement the already existing ones, making it 16 of such offices across the country. In Calabar, Paul Abel, NGA News. Governor Wike inaugurates quarters for judges of National Industrial Court in River State. For details of this and more, let's join Jenny in our Port Harcourt Network Center. It's good to see you, Jenny. Nice to see you too, Nadine. Good evening and welcome. The Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanko Mohammed, has described Governor Yeson Wike as a shining example of political leaders who have the interest and welfare of the Nigerian judiciary at heart, both in words and action. Court judges' quarters constructed by the River State Government. Ogedinye Query reports. 
The inauguration of the Ministry of Justice in the states. Chief President, National Industrial Court of Nigeria, Justice Benedict Kanyem, noted that Governor Wike has remained a strong voice in the clamor. To see this mind-blowing gesture, which I refer to as the emblem of humanitarianism, replicated all over the nooks and crannies of the country. You have made history by making your state the first to build both the court complex and residential accommodation for judges of the NICM. We have built about 50 flats for Navy. We have built about 50 flats for the Army and Air Force. So it's not peculiar, even in the SSS. We've done that. So it's not peculiar because you are shall know. Even the security agencies who have done that in order to enhance, for us to have good security. And this to support you for administration of uh, justice. They noted that the governor has done well for the judiciary as a choice of project are targeted for the good of the people. Import Harcourt, Ogedinye Query, NTA News. And Akwaibom State Governor Domi Manuel says the World Bank assisted erosion control project along IBB Way Uyo will be inaugurated in December 2021. The governor said this when he visited the project site to assess the speed and quality of work done. Susan Asuko reports. The perennial flood problem along IBB Way Uyo will soon be a thing of the past as efforts put in place by the state government is already yielding positive results. The erosion control project initiated by the state government is in partnership with Nigeria Erosion and Watershed Management Project NUMAP, a World Bank assisted project aimed at addressing erosion crisis. In an on-the-spot assessment of the 8-kilometer underground drainage system, Governor Dom Emmanuel expressed satisfaction over the quality and speed of the project, noting that the drainage will take the perennial flood water off IBB Way at an effort down to Nsiribom local government area. It's one pre-funded job. It's one of the very few jobs that we've pre-funded. We would have gone into the field to do environmental impact analysis. We've done that and the impact very minimal. So it will not affect even the aquatic life of where we are taking to. Uh, uh, the impact is not negative in any way. The project, which will cover about 17 communities cutting across three local government areas, is about 10 meters deep and 12 meters wide. In Uyo, Susan Asukwa, NTN News. Nationwide will continue in Kaduna after the break. Social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless. It becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Television Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. From dusk to dawn, 24 hours a day. 
NTA International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. For Nigerian sports, on NTA, every thousand parliamentarians are more committed than...